Hello, welcome back to the woods. And welcome back to a video that's going to start with a bit of a rant. That's right, I'm going to start off with a bit of a rant because this week in my inbox there was an email from a company, the usual update that they send me every month or so telling me the new latest bits of kit and there was this new fantastic bit of kit a must-have item that I should buy and you'll never guess what it was well it was a cook kit it was an army surplus cook kit that somebody has had remade in stainless steel hmm okay all sounds good so far so it's a pot and a lid and a windshield and it all fits together and it's very, very bushcrafty. It's also 114 pounds. You heard me correctly. 114 quid for a cook kit. That is a copy of a piece of army surplus. Army surplus is usually made to a fairly high spec and these particular ones were made originally by a well-respected manufacturer in their home country. Yes, the original ones were made from aluminium which they are the ones that tend to flood the market and this com particular company has decided to remake them in stainless steel but for 114 quid they're bright and shiny and super and i'm sure a lot of people will dash out there and buy them what they need to do is actually look into it a little bit more because the original issue ones were actually superseded by ones that were stainless steel albeit painted green on the outside but they were the identical piece of kit they certainly if you can source them online and they are out there they don't cost you 114 pounds most definitely not the worst bit about it is well it doesn't even come with the burner you are literally paying for a lid a pan and a windshield for £114, they couldn't even throw a burner in. For goodness sake, people. Stop buying kit off the Bushcraft Centre, all right? He's out to rook you, swindle you, whatever you want to call it. There is a better way. Now this, some of you will recognise. That's right, it's the bush pot. The little DIY one that we put together a couple of videos ago. This didn't cost anything at all at uh, all it was completely free it was made from a throwaway item i also put a video out on the cook kit etc that goes inside it now this does come with a free stove and in this video i'm going to show you how to make one Now this is a project that doesn't require a whole lot of anything. Time-wise, well, I'll tell you about 10 minutes. Materials, well, you're gonna need stuff out of the bin, pretty much. Uh, a tuna fish can, um, there's like a little snack one that, uh, that they do. It's slightly smaller than the ones that come in the tuna and brine, or you could use, I think, uh, a cat food tin. They do a small ring pool cat food tin. You're also going to need a tomato paste or tomato puree tin again one of the little ring pool types and the last item is some fiberglass loft insulation i think that for the last over i made i saw some in a skip and i pulled it out for this one i just went up in my loft and just pulled it out so two of those items came out of the bin one lot came out of my loft uh, and as i say time wise about 10 minutes For tools to make this project again you're not going to need a lot uh, a small ruler something you can measure with ideally in mills you're also going to need uh, an awl something with a sharp spike it could be an awl it could just be the reamer on a pen knife any of those items will do you're also going to need a screwdriver or metal type bar a pair of scissors a tin opener and a sharpie Now for your method, well the first thing you need to do, if you take those tins, where the ring pull pulled out, you've got a little sharp edge. Find a firm surface, I use the kitchen worktop, 
and then take your screwdriver and flatten it down. So literally you push against that sharp edge, roll the tin and you'll push that flat edge down. So you've now no longer got that sharp edge that you could cut yourself on. With that done, what you're then gonna do is take your tin opener and take the bottom end off the tomato puree can. So you've now got a solid metal rim, an open tube with a bare metal edge on the bottom. At this point, obviously you may need to perhaps put a pair of gloves on, or well, certainly be a little bit careful because that bottom edge is going to be sharp. Next, place your can onto the counter with the solid metal rim uppermost, and then you're gonna measure down 10 mil from that top rim. With your Sharpie, you're then gonna mark that point. Ideally, on the opposite side of the can to where the metal seam is that runs down through the side of the can. With that hole marked, what you're then gonna do is take your reamer or your awl and you're gonna make a little hole through where that little spot is. Next, we're gonna to go to the other end of that can where the sharp bare edge is, so you're gonna to need to be quite careful. And you're gonna measure 10 mil and 15 mil from that bottom raw edge. And you're gonna mark those two points again with your Sharpie. Then take your Sharpie again and draw a line all the way around from the 10 mil line and the 15 mil line. So you should have completely straight lines, five mil apart and 10 mil up from the bottom, running all the way around your can. Next, you're gonna take your pair of household scissors and you're gonna snip all the way around that 10 mil line. Again, being careful because the bit of metal that comes off is gonna be very, very sharp. Get it as straight as you can, all the way around that line. Then you should just be left with your five mil line. And what you're then going to do is take your Sharpie again and you're gonna mark four graduations all the way around on that five mil line. And that should be in quarters. So effectively you've divided it into four. Then take your pair of scissors and you're gonna snip where those four lines are, four little triangles. They want to be no more than five mil high, so they're just about touching that line, and about five mil across the base. And there should be four of them. you're almost there. What you're gonna do next is you're gonna take the tomato puree can and you're gonna put it in the cat food can. You're then gonna get some strips of your loft insulation, wrap it around the top, and then using a tent peg or a piece of wire or even a screwdriver, you're gonna push it down the side. And you're gonna go all the way around. What I tend to do is wrap it and then push it in. And you pack it in as tight as you can. Keep checking and looking at it to make sure that the, the taller can is central in the tuna fish can. As I said, keep packing it in until you can't physically get any more in.
and that is our stove pretty much finished I haven't bothered taking the paint off I've just left it as it is I don't worry about the plastic film inside because again it doesn't really make a lot of difference now we're going to fire this one up I'm going to show you how to use it now because this is the first firing it takes a little bit longer but once you've done this two or three times the whole process does actually speed up but again it is all simplicity itself so the first thing we do is we add a little bit of our methylated spirits into the bottom of the stove. Now when you first fire in, it takes a little while for it to soak up through. So give it a few seconds. With that done, what you're then gonna do is, using your ferro rod, just drop a spark into the liquid in the center of the stove. If it's daylight, wave your hands over the top just to see if it has caught because you can't always see the flame during the daytime. So just wave your hand gently over the top to feel if it's warm. What you should see in a few seconds is the flame will flicker in the bottom and then all of a sudden the uh, liquid fuel that's soaked up through the fiberglass on the outside will suddenly catch light. And then all we do is sit your stove straight on top. With this, there is no need for a pot hanger or a pot stand, it literally sits directly on top of the stove. It's quite a nice efficient little stove, it burns quite well and uh, my little bush pot sits nicely on top of it but it also fits things like a, a crusader type mug very very well. It's a cracking little stove, it's very very simple to make and you're using stuff that you would otherwise have thrown away. It's certainly not costing you £114. So there you go, even a few minutes you've got boiling water. And it is that quick and that efficient. It takes no time to make and it takes no time to do the job that it was designed to do. So there you go, a quick, easy, do-it-yourself project that you can do at home. This time of year, as we're going into out of autumn and into winter remember those days are going to get shorter and the nights get longer and having little projects that you can do at home ready for when you get out in the woods are absolutely ideal and this would be a cracking one to start with if you enjoyed this video then remember hit that thumbs up button and if you haven't already like and subscribe to the channel in the description box down below you'll see links to my social media instagram and facebook Pop over there, have a look. You'll also find a link over there to my Etsy shop. Pop over there, you can get the green craft patches as well as a few other items that I sell from time to time. Now, also, I'll do a little update probably in the next few days about the uh, Moors Kahansky Memorial Weekend 22, the one that is coming up at the beginning of December. So I will do a little update on that, let you know where we are, uh, and hopefully you are already making plans to get involved in that too. I think that's everything. I've been Neil, and until next time, stay safe.